Hello, and welcome to the Medicaid and CHIP Payment and Access Commission's Medicaid 101 series. Today, we'll be talking about Medicaid in context, key statistics, and trends. But first, a little bit about the Medicaid and CHIP Payment and Access Commission, or MACPAC. MACPAC is a nonpartisan legislative branch agency that provides policy and data analysis and makes recommendations to Congress, the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the states on a wide array of issues affecting Medicaid and the State Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP. MACPAC conducts policy research and analysis that is fact-driven and evidence-based. For more information, visit MACPAC.gov. The purpose of this series is to provide educational content and highlight, where applicable, recommendations that the Commission has made previously. This presentation will focus on putting Medicaid in context by providing some key statistics and trends. First, we will cover the demographic characteristics of enrollees. Then, we will review data related to Medicaid enrollment and spending by providing the general landscape of the program and then putting it in context with other payers. Lastly, we'll wrap up by discussing selected services covered by Medicaid and its role within the larger healthcare landscape. Before we begin, we would like to set the stage regarding the data used for this presentation. Our general rule was to use the most recent complete year of publicly available data for the statistics of interest. Most of the data in this presentation are sourced from MacStats, which is a publication updated annually that compiles a broad range of Medicaid and CHIP statistics from multiple data sources, including census, enrollment, survey, and national and state level administrative data. We also included data from other sources such as data from Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, or Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Throughout this presentation, you will notice the use of different years of data based on what was publicly available. We will note the year of data as we present for clarity. Please refer to each figure's data notes for more information regarding the data source and other relevant information. First, let's discuss who Medicaid covers and their characteristics. Federal statute and regulations mandate that states cover certain low-income populations in their Medicaid program, and they define the optional populations that states may choose to cover. These groups are known as mandatory and optional eligibility groups. Among the mandatory eligibility groups, states are required to cover low-income related children and pregnant women, low-income families, foster care youth, individuals who are either elderly or disabled, and certain low-income Medicare enrollees. States may choose to offer coverage to optional eligibility groups, which include low-income children, pregnant women, and parents with incomes above federal minimum standards, elderly and disabled individuals also with incomes above federal minimum standards, and low-income adults without dependent children. In fiscal year 2024, about 88.1 million individuals were enrolled in Medicaid. About 25% of enrollees were in the new adult group, which covers individuals up to 138% of the federal poverty level. Based on historical data, over half of Medicaid enrollees were in the individuals over 65, disability-related, or child-related eligibility groups. Here, we have the demographic characteristics of Medicaid and CHIP enrollees in calendar year 2023. We relied on survey data for these figures, which combined Medicaid and CHIP enrollees into a single category. Over half of enrollees were female, or 56.2%. Most Medicaid and CHIP enrollees were under 65 years old, with 44% between 0 and 18 years old, and 47.6% between 19 and 64 years old. The three largest racial and ethnic groups among enrollees were white, non-Hispanic, with 40% of enrollees, Hispanic with 31.5% and Black non-Hispanic with 18.4%. About one-third of enrollees report an income below 100% of the federal poverty level. I will now pass it on to discuss Medicaid enrollment and spending. For the next section, we will look at Medicaid program enrollment and spending. This graph shows the trends in Medicaid enrollment and spending from fiscal years 2013 to 2023. The top line shows full year equivalent enrollment, also known as average monthly enrollment, 
and the bottom line shows total Medicaid spending. As you can see, spending and enrollment tend to rise and fall in tandem. The trends reflect policy changes to Medicaid coverage, such as the continuous coverage requirement during the public health emergency, which was a driver in the growth in enrollment from 2020 to 2023. Looking further into growth trends, this graph shows the annual growth rates in Medicaid enrollment and spending. From fiscal year 2013 to 2023, annual growth in Medicaid enrollment and spending averaged 5 and 6 percent, respectively. These increases were concentrated in 2013 to 2015, when states began to expand Medicaid under the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, and in 2020 through 2023 due to the continuous coverage requirement under the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. Excluding these years with sharp growth in enrollment and spending, the annual growth in enrollment averaged 2% and growth in spending averaged 4%. Underneath these national trends, there is considerable state variation. As the map above shows, states vary greatly in their population's share of Medicaid enrollment ranging from 16% to 48% of the population on Medicaid in 2023. These enrollment rates reflect a variety of factors, such as state economic conditions and eligibility decisions, including whether to expand Medicaid under the new adult group. In this map, states that did not expand Medicaid are indicated with hatched lines. Note that North Carolina has since expanded Medicaid in December 2023. Medicaid has different eligibility groups that are typically defined by the populations they cover and the financial criteria that apply. Some benefits may be unique to certain eligibility categories. For example, children under 21 can receive the Early and Periodic Screening, Diagnostic, and Treatment, or EPSDT benefit, which requires states to provide comprehensive and preventive health services for that population. Eligibility pathways for individuals over 65 or have a disability generally have more complex eligibility criteria. Additionally, many of the enrollees in these two groups qualify for Medicaid coverage of long-term services and supports, or LTSS, once they demonstrate the need for assistance based on state thresholds for clinical and functional impairment. As this figure shows, Medicaid spending is largely driven by enrollees in the disabled and over 65 eligibility groups. In fiscal year 2022, individuals eligible on the basis of disability and individuals age 65 and older accounted for about 20% of Medicaid enrollees, but about 41% of program spending. Children accounted for about 36% of enrollees and 15% of spending, and the adult groups accounted for about 44% of enrollees and 33% of spending. Additionally, states vary in the services they cover, as Medicaid services can be mandatory or optional. As mentioned in the previous slide, states must cover mandatory services, such as EPSDT services for children under 21, but they can also choose to provide optional benefits, like Home and Community-Based Services, or HCBS. The breadth of coverage, including the amount, duration, and scope of services, also varies by state. This variation in state eligibility policies and benefit packages is reflected in part by the graph above. This graph shows the state distribution of spending per full year equivalent enrollee by eligibility group for fiscal year 2022. Each bar represents the distribution of spending per enrollee across all states. Longer bars represent greater variation in spending across states. As you can see, the disabled and over 65 eligibility groups have the greatest spending per enrollee. They also have the greatest variation in spending across states compared to the other categories. Besides variation in the underlying health status of enrollees, this variation can also reflect state flexibilities in defining eligibility pathways for these populations and the breadth of services covered, particularly for LTSS. We can see that the average spending per full-year equivalent enrollee also varies across states, ranging from about $5,200 per enrollee to $13,000 per enrollee in fiscal year 2022. As shown in the previous slide, much of the spending is in the groups for individuals who are over 65 or disabled, so much of the variation in overall spending per enrollee across states likely reflects the large variation in spending per enrollee we see in these groups. Other factors contributing to variation in spending per full-year equivalent enrollee may include variation in provider payment levels 
and local healthcare markets. We also broke down Medicaid spending and enrollment by delivery system. This graph shows that comprehensive managed care has grown over time and is now the predominant delivery system. In fiscal year 2022, nearly three quarters of enrollees were enrolled in comprehensive managed care, which is a roughly 50% increase from fiscal year 2010. The growth in managed care was concentrated in individuals over 65 and those eligible on the basis of disability. We also see that managed care spending accounted for over 50% of Medicaid benefit spending in fiscal year 2022. For reference, total benefit spending amounted to approximately $773 billion in fiscal year 2022. Once again, this share is a market increase from fiscal year 2010, particularly for individuals with disabilities and individuals over 65. Our next key statistics focus on Medicaid enrollment and spending compared to other payers. This graph shows Medicaid enrollment as a share of the total population as the dotted line and spending as a share of national health expenditures compared to private insurance and Medicare over time as the solid lines. Around 30% of the U.S. population was enrolled in Medicaid at some point during fiscal year 2023. Despite the increase in the Medicaid enrollment as a percent of the U.S. population since 2020, the increase in Medicaid spending as a percent of total national health expenditures was more moderate. Medicaid continues to account for a smaller share of national health care spending compared to Medicare and private insurance. In calendar year 2023, Medicaid accounted for about 18% of national health expenditures, less than Medicare at 21%, and private insurance at 30% of national health expenditures. In this graph, spending for health programs are compared with spending for other components of the federal budget for fiscal years 1965 through 2023. In general, the share of the federal budget devoted to Medicaid and Medicare has grown steadily since the programs were enacted in 1965, and Medicaid spending continues to account for a smaller share of the federal budget than Medicare. In fiscal year 2023, the share of federal spending on Medicaid increased from the prior fiscal year. This recent growth reflects an increase in federal Medicaid spending from greater enrollment in the provisions of the Families First Coronavirus Response Act as well as a decrease in other federal spending related to the pandemic relief. Now I will turn it over to talk about Medicaid coverage of services. In this next section, we'll focus on key services covered by Medicaid and CHIP. Medicaid and CHIP coverage has been associated with lower on insurance rates and increased access to care and use of medical services. In calendar year 2023, states that expanded Medicaid had an uninsurance rate of 6.5% which was lower than the uninsurance rate among states that did not expand Medicaid, which was 9.9%. Based on data from the National Health Interview Survey, access to care and use of preventive care among non-institutionalized Medicaid and CHIP enrollees was comparable to privately insured individuals. In calendar year 2023, 94% of non-institutionalized children and 78% of non-institutionalized adults covered by Medicaid or CHIP received a wellness visit in the past year. This was comparable to the 95% of privately insured children and 78% of privately insured adults. Within the healthcare landscape, Medicaid is the largest single payer of maternity care services and LTSS, and it plays a key role in its coverage of behavioral health services. Medicaid covers maternity care services such as prenatal care, delivery, and postpartum care, and most of these services are considered mandatory Medicaid benefits. Federal statute requires states to cover maternity care services through 60 days postpartum. However, states have the option to extend postpartum coverage to 12 months, and the vast majority of states have adopted and implemented this extension. Medicaid is the largest single payer of births in the United States, financing 41.2% of all births in calendar year 2023. In rural areas, Medicaid paid for, paid for a larger share of births, financing 46.9% of births. Data show that in calendar year 2023, women whose birth was financed by Medicaid access timely and consistent prenatal care. Almost two-thirds of women started prenatal care in their first trimester, and about 70% received nine prenatal care visits throughout their pregnancy. On this map, we show the share of births covered by Medicaid by state in calendar year 2023, which ranges from 18% to 63.5%. 
In five states, Medicaid financed less than 30% of births. In 42 states, Medicaid financed between 30 and 49% of births. And in four states, Medicaid financed over half the births in the state. In addition to maternity care, Medicaid also plays a key role in the coverage of LTSS. Medicaid is a primary payer of LTSS, covering 47.5% of health expenditures related to these services. The only two mandatory LTSS benefits in Medicaid are nursing facility stays and home health services. All other LTSS benefits are considered optional, including home and community-based services, such as personal care services, supported employment, non-medical transportation, and home-delivered meals. Some institutional LTSS are also considered optional benefits, such as in intermediate care facilities for individuals with intellectual disabilities. Based on MACPAC's analysis of LTSS utilization data in calendar year 2021, over 3 million Medicaid enrollees used HCBS and around 1.5 million used institutional LTSS. As mentioned previously, Medicaid paid for 47.5% of expenditures related to LTSS in calendar year 2022, making up a larger share than Medicare, which paid for a little over 10% of LTSS expenditures, and private insurance, which financed less than 8% of LTSS expenditures. On this slide, we are highlighting the age and eligibility group distribution among Medicaid and CHIP enrollees who used HCBS and or institutional LTSS in calendar year 2021. Most HCBS users were adults with 45% between ages 19 and 64 years old, and a little over 30% were 65 years or older. However, almost a quarter of HCBS users were children between 0 and 18 years old. Taking a look at the distribution of eligibility groups among HCBS users, over 70% were in the aged or blind or disabled eligibility groups. Among institutional LTSS users, over 60% were 65 years or older, with a greater share aged 85 years or older. And similar to HCBS users, the largest share of institutional LTSS users were in the aged or blind or disabled eligibility groups with the largest share among the aged group with 63.7%. Lastly, we'll discuss Medicaid's role in covering behavioral health services, which encompass mental health and substance use disorder, or SUD, treatment. Behavioral health services are not a specifically defined benefit category in Medicaid. Some are covered under mandatory benefits, such as psychiatric inpatient services and SUD treatment, and other services could be covered under optional benefits, such as community-based services to support persons with disabilities. However, behavioral health services are considered mandatory for children enrolled in Medicaid or Medicaid expansion CHIP through the EPSDT benefit, if those services are considered medically necessary. Based on calendar year 2022 data, about 20% or one in five Medicaid and CHIP enrollees received the behavioral health service. The utilization data used in this figure are sourced from CMS and include CHIP enrollees in the analytic population. Looking at behavioral health utilization data in calendar year 2022 by different demographic characteristics, we see that enrollees aged 40 to 64 years old were more likely to receive a behavioral health service with almost a quarter receiving a mental health or SUD service and that 16.5% of children between 12 and 18 years old received a mental health or SUD service. Among the different eligibility groups, enrollees in the blind or disabled group were most likely to receive a behavioral health service, with 49% of enrollees receiving a behavioral health service. And looking at utilization based on enrollees' geographic location, the data show that about a quarter of enrollees in rural areas received a behavioral health service, compared to less than 20% of enrollees in urban areas. Thank you for listening to MACPAC's 101 presentation on Medicaid in Context, Key Statistics and Trends.